let's kick things off with a big picture look at small business and the outlook for the road ahead. Holly Wade is the executive director of research at the National Federation of Independent Business, and she will be interviewed by my colleague and friend Kate Rogers. Kate, the floor is yours. Tyler, thank you so much. And Holly, great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Great. Thank you. Nice to see you. I'd love to just set the tone right now for small business in America. We saw the latest data from the NFIB uh, for last month. Optimism took a leg lower, largely because of the ongoing labor shortage that so many small business owners are facing right now. Tell us how big of a challenge that is. Certainly, NFIB uh, represents small businesses in Washington, D.C. and in all 50 states. And overall, small business economy has improved since the beginning of the pandemic. But they are facing two major headwinds. One is the labor shortage that you just mentioned, and the other is supply chain disruptions. And so both of those are particularly difficult for small business owners right now. You mentioned supply chain. We are seeing that in our own polling as well, that a lot of small business owners are experiencing shortages, hiccups in the supply chain. What are you hearing from your members about how they're absorbing those challenges? Uh, because those are also leading to higher costs for goods. Are they absorbing those costs? Or are they passing them on to the consumer? Absolutely. So the supply chain disruptions, they're impacting significantly or moderately about two thirds of small firms that we survey every month. And it's over all products, all types of products. So whether it's uh, food inventory or lumber, obviously the microchip situation is of concern. And for those who are experiencing these disruptions, they aren't expecting the disruptions to ease up anytime soon, not for six months or later. And so they're having to adjust business operations to absorb those costs. And many are passing those costs on to the consumer. That is one of their main ways of dealing with not only the supply chain disruption cost increases, but also having to uh, increase those costs for those uh, positions that are available to compete for labor supply. And if you're a small business owner who's watching and you're saying, hey, I'm one of those businesses that's facing a supply chain hiccup or issue right now, is there any way to get out in front of this, especially heading into the holiday season for so many retailers that are likely looking forward to potentially recouping some of the losses they experienced last year? Absolutely. So one of we've surveyed many of our members and we have found that they're doing all sorts of measures in adjusting business operations to accommodate for the staffing shortage that many are experiencing, including and mostly had the owner having to uh, pick up hours themselves to uh, increase um, their ability to to meet those uh, consumer demands, um, but also overtime and increasing position, part-time positions to full-time positions. This also includes for many restaurants having to limit the hours of operations or even sometimes the days of operations. So a lot of moving parts for small business owners to navigate, which is becoming particularly stressful for them. Certainly, we've done so many stories highlighting exactly what you just mentioned, limiting hours, inability uh, you know, to find enough staff. As we talk about small business outlook, it's impossible to ignore rising COVID cases around the country and what Delta potentially means for business operations. We saw small business owners get so creative last year, come up with new ways to operate during the pandemic. We thought we were moving ahead into a new normal, but now this is another headwind for small business owners. Any advice uh, you can give on what this might mean as we look at a fall that may look like the fall we experienced last year? Yes, indeed. Certainly, small business owners had to adjust rapidly last year to deal with rising cases of COVID. Um, hopefully, it won't be the same situation as last year, but they're going to have to, unfortunately, navigate a lot of the changes in regulations. Um, many states and cities are now requiring masks and 
small business owners certainly want to make sure that you know their employees, their customers, and themselves are safe and healthy. It's primarily good for their community and also good for business. So having to navigate the health issues related to COVID um, will certainly dominate the adjustments that small business owners need to make um, coming into this fall and winter. Is consumer demand there? We're talking about some of the you know, adjustments, as you just mentioned, that retailers, restaurants, small business owners who are bringing staff back or perhaps keeping staff home are having to make. Do you think consumer demand is there? Is it pent up after what we've experienced as a country over the last year? Absolutely. Where our last COVID survey that we released um, last month showed that those who are experiencing staffing shortages many of them are experiencing lost sales opportunities because of it. And so this is a particular challenge for small business owners in having to compete with their larger counterparts and adjusting business operations to mitigate some of those lost sales opportunities that they're seeing um, now, but also likely see in the coming months. So many of the government aid programs, particularly the Paycheck Protection Program, which we followed so closely and know the NFIB did as well as many of your members you know that wanted aid were able to access it. Those resources, for the most part, have been tapped out with the exception of the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program and some of the idle uh, loans and grants that are out there. There's a push to revitalize uh, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, for example, because it was more than two and a half times, you know, over applied for compared to the $28.6 billion that was actually available for the hard hit restaurants that really needed that aid. Do you foresee that being replenished? Do you think that the government will have to step in once again with aid for small businesses if things continue on the path that they're on right now? Sure, that is still something we're looking at right now. Thankfully, there is still a a great program for small business owners. The employee retention credit that is currently available for employer businesses. It is a, um, a supportive business or a supportive tax credit uh, for those employers. And the problem, though, is not many know that it exists. It is a bit technical to navigate this tax program, um, but. For for many small business owners, they will qualify to take advantage, and it's up to $33,000 per employee if they qualify for the whole duration of the program. So that is certainly a program that small employers should look into if they find themselves in a situation where they need more financial support. Any other government resources that you think our audience should be aware of or that we should highlight that might be available to them outside of the COVID-19 relief programs that we're so heavily focused on over the last year and a half? Certainly, I would suggest for small business owners who are looking for additional financial support to talk with their bank, talk with a small business um, loan officer at their local bank, and to see what's available to them. They might have uh, loans that you know fit their needs right now, but also to have that relationship is enormously helpful, especially going into the fall and winter where business conditions still remain very uncertain. I'd like to talk about new business starts and new entrepreneurs. We saw so many people leave their jobs over the last year. There's been a great reassessment of how we work, where we work, what we do for a living. Are you optimistic that people that are applying for these business applications you know, will go forth and start these new companies? And I'm curious your outlook for new startups and entrepreneurship over the next year or so and, and what you think's ahead. Sure, it's been incredible looking at the data on new business formations. And moving forward, you know, the landscape, the economic landscape has shifted dramatically in some industries. And so that presents itself with opportunities for those who see opportunities in their local community um, to take advantage. And so I'm optimistic that we'll see more business formations in the next year and, and more folks looking to um, start employer businesses also. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities that will likely become available already, but also in the next year or so. And so I have a feeling we'll see more of those business formations in the future. 
Holly, last question here. We've talked about several major headwinds facing down the small business community over the next year. What do you think the big, biggest challenge will be for the small business community, you know, heading into the fall in the next six to 12 months? Absolutely. I think the biggest headwind is going to be being able to fill those open positions. Our last survey showed that almost half of our respondents said that they have an unfilled position that they are trying to um, hire. And so filling those positions to take advantage of those sales opportunities will be paramount for the health of the small business economy um, in the next six months and going forward. Great, and I know we have a session coming up later that will give some advice on how to attract uh, and retain talent in this really challenging environment. Hollywood, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your insights. Wonderful, thank you.